Hello everyone and welcome back to another Sensei series. Today we are looking at nine ways to improve your stage presence. We are entertainers and in a live setting, the music only makes up a portion of the show. To put on a great experience, you gotta engage an audience visually. I'm gonna look at some broader concepts that will apply across genres, though you'll need to do the work to figure out how they fit with your band. I don't know about you, I'm excited for this one, let's dive in. Number one, eliminate silence. Nothing can kill a buzz more than dead silence on stage. Part of this is making sure that as soon as a song ends you are engaged and ready for the next count in. If my drummer trusts that everyone is prepared, he can start counting in the next number before the applause has died down. One of the easiest ways to identify an amateur band is by that awkward silence that occurs when everyone is looking around making sure the other members are ready. Another thing worth considering is planning out instrumental interludes between tunes so you have nice smooth transitions. You could also have cues in the lead singer's banter. As soon as he says a certain line, everyone knows the next song is about to begin. Which brings me to my next point, plan the talking. This isn't always necessary. Some frontmen have the gift of gab and can engage an audience on the spot. Though more often than not, this is not the case. You don't need to necessarily plan out every word, though it doesn't hurt to have some talking points or cues. I firmly believe that if you want to get better at something, you need to practice it. Practicing fronting a band may seem weird and stupid, but it will pay off. Look at yourself in the mirror and work on that banter, try doing it with a camera. It'll make you more comfortable when you're doing it live. This confidence will resonate with the crowd. On the subject of practicing, that brings me to my next point, number three, practice the entire show. What I mean by this is don't just run the songs at rehearsal. Take some time to rehearse the transitions, practice the banter, and run the show in its entirety. That way you're not just hoping that everything comes together on the day of the performance. Number four, move. It's as simple as that, move to the music. You don't necessarily have to be doing Pete Townsend style windmills, but you want to engage yourself somehow physically. Whenever I play live, no matter what, I want to make it seem like I'm having the time of my life. Even if I'm totally miserable, I was hired to entertain, and if it doesn't seem like I'm having a good time, how can I expect anyone else to? If you feel uncomfortable with this, baby, fake it till you make it. Trust me, your audience will enjoy the show so much more than if you're standing around like pretentious, uninterested duds. Number five, eye contact. First, it's important to be making eye contact with the crowd. Facing the drummer the entire time conveys insecurity. Like I said before, confidence and stage presence go hand in hand. Look at the audience, engage them, embrace them, give that pretty girl in the front row a wink. You know you want to. This goes to create a connection with the audience. Hunkering over and staring at your fingers the entire time isolates them. You also want to have periodic eye contact with your fellow musicians. There's a lot of information you can convey with body language. A little nod to signify the end of your guitar solo. A smile to acknowledge a sick drum fill. It's endearing to see those aspects of humanity on stage and it also makes it seem like you're having a good time. Number six, get off the chart. It may not be practical for every gig, but the less time you have to spend reading music, the more time you can spend engaging a crowd. This goes for the instrumentalists as well as the singer. If I see someone reading their own lyrics off an iPad, it just seems lazy to me. Like I said, you want to connect with that audience. Audience. A sheet of music creates a barrier. Number seven, think about outfits. Now, I'm not saying you need to turn yourself into Kiss unless you want to, but a little thought and effort into wardrobe is another one of those things that helps engage an audience visually. Here's the thing, when you're on stage, you get to be the coolest person in the room. And as such, you can take some liberties. You can wear things that are a little bit more flamboyant or outrageous than you normally would. Take some time to try to understand the venue and the gig. You also wanna strike a balance with wearing something true to you. If it looks like you're wearing the same thing you would wear to Applebee's, you're doing it wrong. If you can create some sort of theme throughout the entire, the entire band, well, that can look pretty cool. One more tip that was once given to me. Be very conscious of your shoe choice. An elevated stage makes what you're wearing on your feet much more obvious. Number eight, use props. Props can come in a number of different forms. Having some customized videos play in the background can bring a whole new element to the right gig. Ego boxes are those things that you stand on to elevate yourself at the front of the stage. They can be especially cool. Having some merch to throw out in the crowd can be great. You can also set up rugs, banners, lamps to create a vibe on stage. My first band had a mascot we used. It was a massive paper mache penguin that would sit on top of the bass amp. It was a talking piece. We had a backstory for it. It was a little insane, but the audience loved it. 
these kind of things add another dimension to your show. My final point, number nine, create slash capitalize on special moments. A concert has natural highs and lows, and there's some very special times you wanna do the most with. I believe the single most powerful moment is when the house lights have gone down, the music has faded out, you step on stage and hit that first chord. The audience is the most excited and engaged they're gonna be. If you walk out there, knock over a guitar while the drummer tests the cymbals and the bass player tunes, well, you've taken that beautiful moment and flushed it down the toilet. You can also create some of these moments. For example, halfway into the show, you might wanna dim the lights, put a spotlight in the middle, and do a couple songs acoustic with just the guitarist and the singer. As soon as this change happens, the audience perks up and you've created a moment. When the band comes back on, you got another one. Make the most of these. To finish this thing off, I'll tell you about something I did with a band that may have been one of my crowning onstage achievements. A couple years ago, we had a sold out show in my hometown. All my friends and family were gonna be there and I wanted to hook them in instantly. So the lights go down, everyone hustles to their seats, and this video starts playing. During this time, the lights are still down, the band gets into position. As soon as the first chorus ends in the video, boom, the lights are on and the band takes over the song. The crowd went nuts and it went on to be one of the best shows I've ever played. I'm rather proud of that one. That about wraps it up. I hope you guys found this information useful. Don't get overwhelmed. Remember, the more shows you do, the more this will become second nature. I look forward to seeing you executing these tips when you come through my city. I wanna remind you guys that until June 30th, 2017, I am running a contest where I'm giving away a Cherry Red American Telecaster. All the info for that can be found by clicking that link over there. A big shout out to everyone who supports this channel through Patreon. I've said it before, you guys make these videos possible. I'm Samurai Guitarist, thank you all for watching and I'll see you again soon.